for you guys who don't attend the, the, the monthly uh, main computer society meeting on Sundays at the library, this is what we go through every month to have Huey do an hour or so presentation from trading center. And so Mike's idea with some of the new sound equipment and camera to try to do this as an experiment or maybe in the future um, is, uh, is what we're up to here. So we'll see how it works. So what I have to do first is click on the button below. There it is. Nah, I'm good. I got three of them. So I'm now redirecting Denny's. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can go back to where I was. I've had four updates of Windows 10 just in the past two weeks. <laughs> and I'm on the beta of, what is it, HE2 now? It, it's not, they keep changing the tech terminology. So far, everything seems to be working. And they're all for watching this. I saw it somewhere now. They're not, uh, with the Windows updates, they're not uh, saving, they're not doing a backup for the registry anymore. Right. Yeah. However, you can still back up the registry. Right, right. But it used to automatically be yes. that with the uh, quality of the updates and do so. <laughs> yeah, but everybody was questioning, well, why aren't they still doing the thing? They're wondering, if anybody wondered why I will not use Windows 10. I'll say no more. Update. I won't use it when Windows 7 goes out of, uh, out of whatever. I don't care. Uh, I will. This browser won't let me go. I've built enough uh, virtual machines places. that if anything corrupts or gets trashed, I'll just throw it away and put another browser. Another browser? Other adult materials. <clears throat> I have multiple we have drives, adult multiple operating mm -hmm. systems. He says it's being banned for adult materials. I can do what they want. And before February, I it's intend to buy enough use a different browser. hardware parts that I can build computers for the rest of my life. Mr. Ted, Ted, I'm opening the Brave browser. Oh, Brave, I've heard of that. Yeah. So what, is, what about Brave? It does, it's supposedly good for privacy and ad blocking. Forrest brought it to us five months ago. I yeah. showed it to you. He showed it to you, but his idea of yeah. that night, I told that And I think you were confused on the emails because you said Bravo. I did? Yeah. I mean, he brave. said brave. Yeah, no, it, it, it is and brave. I, I knew it was brave. Does it I think have a lot just, of supporting extensions? Like a a slip of the because there is a problem. problem. Yeah. There like, is a problem. Like, I, I use it. Yeah, Chrome. Yeah. You go into a lot of these different applications. It's a conspiracy. It's one of six browsers I use. Yeah. To confuse you? To confuse the, us yeah. old folks. Well, you can hold I, I uh, <laughs> don't buy into the... Uh, Game, so I don't get involved in that. Okay, Stan, I'm going to ask you to control who speaks if you can so that we can actually have like a presentation. Each person who speaks will then I'll put the camera on them and I'll move the mic towards them. Fantastic. All right, who wants to start? Forrest, you want to go this way or Jeff, should we go around this way? I'm just just say one thing, and uh, you're talking about the brave and all this? Yes. It's safe for I have to move. Don't join the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you are glad to hear about Brave being safe and all this, but yet they still use Google. 
They won't go to Duck, Duck, Go. You notice that? You say, hey, a lot of people here, they Google this and they still use Google. I should. Other than Duck, Duck, Go. Right. You still use Google. I use both. Well, okay. I never use Google. I, I took it off my computer. That's all. I took all. it off my phone. That's all. All right, that's it for you, Forrest? Yeah. All right, Bob Dolph. Yeah, you got the, uh, I sent a couple things in. Did you? Yeah. All right, I have been out at a meeting okay. all day myself. Well, why, while, while we're doing that, I've got a, something, a, a mystery for everybody here. As you know, you go to uh, trade shows and you get uh, these little gifts, little premiums and things. And I was going through some of mine from recent trade shows, and usually, most of the time, I know what they are, but I've got one here, and I want you guys to guess what it is, because I have no idea what this device is. It's a pill splitter. No, it's not, because the pills wouldn't be that. If it's a pill splitter, why would you? Because the, it goes down in there. And the smaller one goes up here? Because it's got a weird shape to put the pill in. It would slide, well, you, it would slide it around. You usually put it in here and it slides here. You, it slides down to here, but yeah. if it's up here, it won't cut it in half. So, if it goes down there, pill splitter. I've got one almost like it. All right. Like it's mystery solved. It's a pill splitter. I just did about 200 and some Does anybody night. want one? Sure. Uh, you want it? Yes. All right. I've got, I, had, I had two of those. What was it again? A pill splitter. A pill splitter. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, a while back I mentioned that I was planning on getting a, a, a cloning, video cloning device called an HDML, not HDMI, it's HDML they call it, Cloner Pro. Uh, you can click on that if you want. And it, um, I did get the device. Uh, it worked as, as described. But about a week or two into it, it stopped recording. So I wanted to look on the positive side. They did provide very good support. Uh, they sent me another one out on Amazon very quickly and nicely. And very the tech support in this outfit is very, very friendly. So we'll see. Who's got, who's Ted. Ted. dreaming? Ted. We're in the turn, meeting. Turn the volume off. Just turn it off. I'm trying to turn the damn thing off. Why, are, why would you even stream this? We're here. Okay. I just wanted to see what's going on. All right. Okay. So there's the box and the remote. I, I, I didn't bring those devices in because I didn't bring those in because they're pretty straightforward. What it is, the, the cloning. Do you have any mustard? That's fine. Okay. I'll bring that for you. right? Thank you. That's right. That's great. Right. 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 I need several words. Okay. All right. Last time I got a Sunday, the dish was three big scoops of ice cream. Wait until we get the oh, waitress yeah, sets us up here. What kind of ice cream? All the kind? All of them? All the flavors? Okay. Okay. Vanilla with chocolate. Yeah, whole time. Any whipped cream? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Lou. Okay. Set to, set, to, set to continue? Okay. Um, okay, so anyway, the the device is pretty straightforward. It, it You can hook it in line. It's uh, got HDMI connection in and out. It also can allow you to hook in your PC. It does come with a couple nice little software pieces with it that allows you to uh, collect, your, collect your video together and edit it and trim it and stuff, and it's pretty slick little software allows you to convert your, uh, well, one of the things nice about this, a lot of the cloners, they don't do the entire, if you have a whole two hour movie, it, it chops it up into segments and you gotta put it back together. This one will do the whole the whole segment. You say record and it'll go through and record two hours, six hours, however long. The session is how much uh, room you have. It's got a thing on it for a USB stick. Uh, that's what I've been using. I just load up. I got a 64 gig USB stick, and I load that up, and then I take it over to my PC in another area, and uh, dump it down. Um, it's one of the things I did bring in, though. I thought you might find interesting is what I liked about this is it'll work all the way up to 4K, but on the low end, if you've got some old like VHS, you got VGA, or you got something like that, 
they, they have this, I guess I could call it an octopus cord that comes with it and it hooks in. And it's got composite, it's got the, uh, the, the high resolution composite, it's got the uh, VGA connector all on it, and you basically plug this into the unit. So if you've got like an old VHS and you want to do some old VHS tapes or something like that, it can go back and record those too. So uh, it looks like something I'll be able to use for quite a while. Ironically, when I started investigating around about these, the demand for these came out of the gaming community. Gamers just love to be able to record all the great moves and stuff they do on games, and they found this, this manufacturer found a, a, a niche in that. But so it, it seems to be a really nice, flexible unit. You can schedule recordings and, and things like that. So anyway, I'll pass this around. Is this a piece of hardware that's holding it? It's a little. It's a little box. It's a little tiny box, like a Roku box, about the size of Roku, and it has a remote with it, and you can record and you can play back and stuff. And I don't know where it disappeared to. It was there. Uh, in the initial screen, yeah, there it is, Dan. I don't right know here. what's that thing in the what's that box? I can't it's close it. I yeah, there's, uh, okay. there's a little tiny square. Okay. That up, says submit. No upper right. Ah, you're right. There you go. Thank okay. You. So how much and was this? There it is. I it was either 130 something or 180. This is the pro, so it's like it's like a level above the. I think they have one for around 100 or something like that. Yeah, it's you got to pay a few bucks for it, but. Um, I, it seems to be very valuable for me. Right now, I'm just extracting a lot of stuff I had on my Spectrum box that I had saved, different uh, recordings that I wanted to, and now I'm transferring that over to uh, uh, to uh, the uh, to my PC and to my library. Your Spectrum box is a DVR. You're playing it, and in live time, you're capturing it. Live time, you're capturing it. Yeah, yeah, and you can also put it in line. You can put it in line with your Roku or whatever else you're streaming. And just it it goes in line with the uh, HDMI, so you got then the box has an HDMI and an out and an HDMI in. So so you could record Netflix. Yeah, you could record movies off of anything that's going out to your monitor. Here's the pricing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, okay. So there's one for ninety five. Yeah, one forty five. One for one twenty eight. One forty. Yeah. The pro the, 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 the pro. I think it had a couple extra features, a sixteen gig in there, <clears throat> built into it. But it's it's done real good. It hasn't dropped uh, frames or anything when I when it's been recording, uh, you know, wow. stuff. So uh, it looks like a nice versatile unit. I was a little disappointed it conked out on me early, but I gave them the benefit of the doubt, and they they sent me another one out actually. So how long are the end of second? Uh, I've had it uh, recording at about uh, a week or so now. Yeah, yeah, and I've recorded and it's working fine. Yeah, so. Um, okay, and then there was another one I had in the initial email link, and then we can. A uh, quick comment about this: I used to have something that I think I paid forty-five dollars that connected to a DVR with a. It was an external SATA, SATA three connector to, okay. to a VGA, and when I, I I forgot exactly when it stopped functioning, but it would no longer work with. I think maybe it was Windows Seven. It was old. It was fine with XP, but then when Windows Seven came out, they didn't uh, support it, and they never went back to, to, to yeah. keep it going. It just yeah. stopped working. Yeah. Well, I've gone through. I think we all have. I've gone through an evolution of many things where you could like take the output of your VHS uh, recorder or something, and you could put it into uh, your PC and stuff, USB connection stuff. But I was just, you know, and those are all fairly low resolution now because they're probably 10 years old. So I wanted to get something that was uh, high resolution. Actually, this is a little futuristic because it does go up to 4K. So you can. Okay, this is the second. Yeah, the second one. This I ran across. Uh, I don't know how many in here are uh, on the mailing list for uh, SourceForge. Uh, everybody's familiar with SourceForge? Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd throw this up because uh, I look at it each month. I get the mailing, and they have like their top pick of the month or something. And this was one I wasn't aware of. It's uh, it seems to be extremely popular. They own, uh, there's like a hundred thousand or so downloads a a month or a week or something or a day. Um, so I took a closer look at it. Yeah, I took a look at it, and it, it's an equalizer that you can basically add onto your PC onto your Windows PC. And uh, it just uh, gives you a little more control over your sound than the normal. Uh, it has different templates in there for different sound equalizer profiles and everything. And it's free. 
Yeah. It loaded great. It's performed great. I think it's got top five star. I don't think anybody's had any issues with this over the hundreds of thousands of people using it. So I thought it was worth pointing out if anybody wants to enhance their audio a little bit on their on their system. So anyway, that was. I have That's one it. question. What's the difference between HDMI and HDML? They logoed it HDML. I, in fact, I oh. originally contacted them. I said, you got that wrong. It's supposed to be H. She says, no, that's the name of the device, HDML. Uh, That's the only thing I could get from them. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> threw me off, too. I, okay. You know. they, didn't, they didn't give you any, any insight as to what HTML stood for? Mm -hmm. No, no. I didn't really, I don't think I went into it with them that much either. So, but uh, no, that's just the name of the device. It's HTML Cloner Pro. And uh, no, I just, I, I, so far I've seen that performs nicely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of versatility. So you can basically stick that on anything. You got a HDMI video output, or even in this case, you got the octopus here. So if you got older devices and you want to grab something off an older device, you can do it too. So, yeah. What does that record on to? This that actually creates MP4 videos. And then it'll go on to your, your, your I can take that. It's, it's, thumbstick? it's stored in the, on the thumbstick, or if you have a PC directly connected, it would load it, dump it directly in the PC. It has a little USB connection, a micro USB connection, and then you plug it into your uh, PC, and you can do it that way too. And it's got some other software for that too. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they're just MP4 uh, files, and then uh, you, can, uh, you can convert them. Uh, there's a, one of the things in their software is it will take a, an MP4 and convert it into a, uh, you know, where you got the, the audio track and the video track for a, you know, for somebody to put in their player and watch a movie or something. So. And you can also lump them together, move them together. There are dozens of programs, BLC being one of them, yeah. uh, that can convert yeah. them into a whole yeah. bunch of different formats. Yeah. Well, they, they provide this. This comes along with the, the hardware. It's right. Very, it's very friendly. You don't have to do a lot right. of things. So. All right. One of the uh, programs I use for a converter, although I don't do very much of it, is Format Factory. Yeah. Which is very good. You have about 15 different formats you can use with video, okay. another 30 with audio. Is that, is that freeware? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dan? Wake up, Stan. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I have a question. Armin just mentioned that he uses a program called Format Factory. I was making some notes there. Okay. I was wondering Format if we could maybe, so I wonder if we could maybe see it for a moment. Yeah, I'm getting, uh, actually, I haven't done a lot with uh, video like Blu ray and all that kind of stuff, and I'm getting a, a learning curve on that right now, which has uh, been interesting. Format factory. Details. Go to fast take. Yeah, right here. Right here is chicken fry. As your finger sizzle. Well, that's good. Is that going to be? You got that in the notes? Oh, yeah. Catch that in the notes. Well, thanks, Arvin. Haddock fish. 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 Haddock? Haddock, right here. That's me. I haven't looked at that one yet. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Are we ketchup and mustard? Ketchup. Right? Uh -huh. No, I got to bring some. I got to get some mustard, too, for him. That's a pretty good job okay. with the meal. Okay, I got to get you some napkins because it's spilled all together, over. Okay. Like I got to bring some napkins huh? right over. Never had it all together like this. Yeah. Here you go. You got some spoon as well. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay, got you. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. That's it. That's it. Yep. Gary, you your food. My dinner just nice. showed up. Why, I, why don't we skip you? And, yeah. Okay. Nice. You well. No, okay. You go. I can go. You need to hook in. No. Okay. Uh, so I've got a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> Arvin, you might be interested in this. Uh, I got an Akita. This is this was a, uh, a Kickstarter project for Indiegogo, 
and it's a device that you put on your network that monitors it for security reasons. Uh, I haven't used it yet. Like the thing box. Like the thing box. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I remember reading about. It. Yeah. So uh, I'll have an update next month. But this this is the this is the unit. That's what it looks like. It sits on a table. Put it next to your router. Uses one of the ports on your router and monitors your network. So. Why don't you do that work for? Um, for uh, bad things. People trying to get in. Yeah. Okay. Security. Intrusions security uh, uh, intrusions and so forth. How did you uh, let you know? I don't know yet. I'll oh. let you know. Okay. Just, <laughs> you let me know. I just, I just got okay. it. Okay. Yeah, to I'll, be continued. I'll let you know next One time. of the things that I've done is I've set my router up so only devices with IP addresses that I know are mine will run through the router and through Wi-Fi. Mac addresses? Okay. They won't even do anything else. Won't let anybody else in. You mean MAC addresses? Yes. Right. MAC addresses. Well, those can be spoofed, so. Well, um, yeah. But and then the guy's got to sit outside my house, and I'll see him on the camera. So if I see him, he's in deep, deep, deep trouble. Yeah. Was it? How long I don't remember, but it took me like a year and a half to get. So that's, that's why I don't remember. It took, it took a long time. About uh, 100, between 115 and 130. I'll probably look it up and tell you. Yeah. I, I remember, because I remember looking into that before I bought the thing. Uh, some, something else. Quick, quick point. At the past Sunday meeting, Bob Black bought something also from Kickstarter that took about a year to get there. He paid 150 for it, and it's now 300. Mm -hmm. It's a, a a scanner with a stand and a foot switch, and you can copy a whole book. You know, you lay the book out mm -hmm. flat, and they say you can do 300 pages in 20 minutes. So he has some books that he wants to be able to duplicate, uh, put them on, onto a CD, or you know, share with his kids that sort of thing. And he spent about a half an hour showing that, so it's really remarkable. Neat. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Something else that I got was um, anybody else got an Amazon Echo or the uh, Echo uh, Auto? Mm -hmm. The Echo Auto? Right here. You got it. Have you plugged it in yet? You tried it? Oh, yeah. Does it work well? Yes. Okay. Good. So I just got that. I haven't tried that yet either. <laughs> what is it? It's a, uh, it's an, do you know what an Amazon Echo is? Well, of course. I got one. Okay. Well, it's called Auto because you put it in your car. Oh. oh. Okay. Um, with my phone. Bluetooth with your phone, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Shares your network, your internet connection with your phone. And you can. Can I interrupt? <clears throat> you would like to interrupt? Yes. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can tell no. by the. Can you see me? We have Arvin brought his, so we actually have one here. Oh, you got one there? Okay, that's the size of it. Uh, I've had mine a, oh, about a week or two now, uh, my uh, Amazon Auto, and I love it. <clears throat> I have to make sure my phone has the Alexa. I shouldn't have said it. She's, gonna, she's listening now. Uh, the Echo uh, uh, app on my phone, and as long as I do, I can get in and out of the car, and it usually will reconnect. I can tell it to uh, listen to news. Uh, I want to listen to a podcast. I ask it what time it is. I ask it what, when we're going to have rain. And it works just like the Echo at home. So I, I, I'm loving it. My wife's more expensive, but she does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear the first part of that. I'm sorry. My wife is a lot more expensive than that, but she does about the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I can also turn the lights on in the house without being at home. I have selective hearing. I'm getting to it since I have a whole pile of different Huey, as long as we have you on the screen, can you comment on how the microphone is picking up people talking? Uh, not too bad. I can hear. What The problem I'm having, I'm on a... Chromebook, and I'm seeing the the four pictures of either picture or no picture of the four people that are on, and I'm not seeing if one of them is larger than others. I hope you are there, Mike. 
and I'm hoping the record. I am recording this. I'm hoping the recording will pick it up properly, but because I'm on a Chromebook, it may not be working right. Um, of course, what I see doesn't matter unless I actually share my screen. Um, so my screen is normally blank in the center, and then I just have the four uh, up top. Um, but we'll we'll iron that out. There has yeah. to be a way that, like, you could change and make me the presenter. Like, because right now when you're talking, you're right in the center. Do you also see yourself in the center of your screen? Nothing. Nothing's changing on mine except a green box around whoever is speaking. Okay, when I say so whoever is speaking, the box is. I see myself, but see it's, it's no different size than the others. Yeah. Can I can I uh, make a comment? This is Dick. Um, I yep. notice in the top right hand corner of my screen. I'm on a PC. I have. It says gallery view or speaker view, and view gives me just what you described, four equal pictures. But speaker view uh, highlights and emphasizes the, the view from the speaker. Yeah, and, now, that, that, and that doesn't work on a Chromebook. Yeah. Ask him to introduce himself and tell us where he is. You, well, Huey is Huey, and Dick, it's Dick Bogle. Oh, so he's he's here in Orlando, but it is Dick. Uh, right, Sanford. 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 Yeah. All right, well, it may turn out that this isn't the app we want to use. We'll have to figure out, because the real key is what's on my what's on my video right now of our group should be front and center in the in the main screen if we're actually going to send it out. So we got to figure out how to get it there. But yeah, we'll, there. we'll uh, there may be a different way to do it than what we're doing, and I may have to do it from my PC instead of the Chromebook. But uh, we'll we'll work it out. But so far, it's working. Is there anyone else online besides Dick Vogel? Welcome. No. Thank you. Nope. I'm impressed with it so far. There's but a I, there's a popular podcasting program. <laughs> called OBS. Are you familiar with it? Anybody familiar with it? It's, it's it's freeware, I believe. And it's pretty popular. I recently went to a, a, a seminar on podcasting, and they presented that software. And it looked pretty impressive, especially for being free. Is that so, orange, blueberry, strawberry, OBS? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know. Just OBS. So, anyway. So I'd throw that in if anybody's looking for a different. Back to Sean. Um, and last thing is uh, uh, somewhat somewhat tech related because uh, I'm going to be upgrading my car eventually, um, probably within the next the next year. And if anybody's looking to buy a car, uh, Consumer Reports is amazing. The amount of details they have about cars and the reliability ratings and so forth. Um, I'm looking at uh, replacing my Honda Element again within probably within the next year uh, with a, either a Toyota RAV4 hybrid or uh, another Honda or a Honda CRV or uh, a Hyundai Santa Fe. And the uh, the quality of the, from what I can tell from the uh, ratings. The quality of the Toyota is just way above everybody else, even the Honda. Right. Um, so I'm uh, kind of researching that. And the technology is really advanced. My car is uh, 15 years old. So now we've got the self lane centering and <coughs> braking and all that self braking. So I'm looking forward to uh, upgrading the technology. So that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Orban? Yeah. Uh, I have the uh, Amazon Auto. There's this little device here that square in the back sticks it on the magnet that's on the uh, dash. And the magnet there, and you just stick it on. It comes with the magnet? Yeah, it comes with a little device. That you stick it somewhere, and then this just pops in there. If you want to take it with you, I just leave it on the seat. What was the name of it? Amazon Auto. Oh. All right. Now, in addition to what Huey said, 
I have a lot of Amazon devices, so I can make a phone call to anyone, hands free, because it, it'll it will pair with my iPhone in my pocket. I can send a text to anyone. I have an Amazon microwave, an Echo microwave, so I can turn it on and have dinner ready when I come home. I can change the temperature in my house because I also have a thermostat that's uh, that works with the Echo. Um, I forget, it's a, a much less uh, expensive one. It cost $115 instead of around 200 I can't remember the name, but it works great. And I just say, you know, Alexa, or in my case, some of the rooms have two or three devices in them. So I have one will be Echo, one will be Alexa, and one will be uh, computer. And I can talk to whichever device I want with one of those three. If I ever put four in a room, I'll be sunk. <laughs> <coughs> anyway. Um, what do you use for speakers? This goes through the car speakers. But also, there's a another. Uh, this has got a plug on it that goes to a. Uh, Could go into any speaker. any speaker, any Bluetooth speaker. I have a Bluetooth speaker, but I never use it as oh, Bluetooth. Oh, that link to a Bluetooth Right. Uh -huh. So it works. It works fantastic. And the nice thing about it is one of the nice things about it, since I have Amazon Prime. I get lots of free music, <clears throat> so people can sit there and talk about, you know, serious radio and all that. No, I can say, ask for anything I want and have it play through either through the radio or through that speaker that I have when it's plugged in. So I was listening to uh, Do What Diddy from uh, Manfred Mann, Rock remember that, from years, years ago. And I was listening to that several times in the car the other day, having a great time driving along. And you can make phone calls and send texts and all that without ever touching the phone or taking your eyes off the road. So anyway, it's a nice device. It's already been passed around. So everybody's seen it as a little tiny thing. And it, uh, when I turn the car on, it goes on. When I get in the car and turn the car and it pairs automatically with the phone, I don't have to do a thing. It, it When it turns on, you hear it go, and it's on. So you, the intent of, of many auto manufacturers is to actually, have, they have Amazon Auto now, right. but it's a subset of what the electric is. Right. And so um, I've, I've seen he announced that in 2020 or 2021, they'll have the full blown Amazon Auto built in, which is, I guess, nice. But this is this was like twenty six dollars or something. It was dirt cheap compared to. Now it may have been because I was on the list for when I got one of the ones that came out the first day it came out, and I had signed up for it two or three months before. So it may have been a special price because I did the same thing with a microwave and I only paid fifty dollars for a really nice Wi-Fi operated microwave. So is there a power cord that goes into that? Yeah, there's a power cord that goes in um, right here, micro USB. Um, and you just plug I have I ought to bring that in. I have so many devices in my car that I got a um, plug in auto auto USB hub with five ports or six ports in addition to the radar detectors and all the other ones that have to plug right in. So um, it, it's a USB auto automobile hub. All right. So then you never have to go home. <laughs> right. I have a, I have a um, a charger in it that will charge all the USB devices that I have. 
I've got a seven port charger at the house <clears throat> that charge all of it. Is there a battery in it too? Like, I have no idea. I don't think so. Okay. Like if you turned it on right now, it wouldn't turn on. Correct. Okay. You have to you have it to has to, has to be powered. Hmm. Yeah, I would know because I would say Alexa and it would it would light up. It actually lights up just like mm -hmm. the no, the button is to turn the microphone off when you don't want it to be listening to you. All right. Do you uh, leave your, your microphones all muted throughout the day? No. Are you concerned about it listening to you? No, because I don't do I don't say anything that it shouldn't listen to, <laughs> except occasional cursing, and I don't really care if you hear that. In fact, I want people to hear that when I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking of putting my, uh, I have an old CB radio that's got a, a, a speaker set up on it that will broadcast like the like police cars do. You know, they can come up and, and I've been thinking of saying a few choice words to some people using their phones instead of paying attention to the road. Yeah, that's fine. I don't. I don't care. I'm not concerned. I have them all over my house. You can limit what they listen to, and they're really only listening for the the keywords that turn them on. They do record everything, and they keep the recording once you you know once you ask it. But you can delete all of that too. And every once in a while, I'll go in and just delete everything from all the devices that I have. Just because it just fills up, tends to fill up with lots of garbage, you know. How do you do that? How do you delete? Yeah, huh? it's in the Alexa app on your phone. Yeah. Just tell it to delete. You, well, you yeah, you, <clears throat> you poke. I think two or three pokes, and it, it, there's been rumors that third-party apps have been able to get Alexa to listen without the keyword. And that may be, you know, I don't say anything or do anything that, you know, would be a security risk at all. You go to websites and it's keeping track and then sending you ads and mail. No. You don't do any of that? I buy almost everything I buy from Amazon. I do buy some other things, but I probably spend 10 grand a year at Amazon. Uh, it's my main, my main shopping thing. I have Amazon Prime. I placed two orders today. I probably have 150 to 180 orders in so far this year. Almost one a day, or things and little things. You know, not not necessarily big things. Today I ordered some shoe polish and a few other little things. <laughs> you know, I don't have to go to the store. It's cheaper. You know, if you get in the car and just go two blocks and you've already spent a dollar. You know, and my time. So, yeah, it's free shipping for practically everything. And uh, I just, it's convenient. And it isn't, it isn't always the cheapest. It's generally cheaper than retail and cheaper than many stores, but not all of them. You can often find things cheaper other places, but you have to look hard for it to find it uh, cheaper. You can even find sometimes, even on Amazon, it'll be at a lower price someplace else on Amazon. I've seen prices jump when I go back to look at the same thing. I'm thinking about buying it, and I go back, and then it, it's already a dollar more or something. Right. There's, a, there's an extension on Amazon. I think it's an extension for it. Uh, called best, Honey. Called best price. And there's one called Honey. Yeah, Honey. Yeah, Honey and Best Price. Honey and Best Price. And they, yeah, they go out and they look for the best. Right, and I, and I use Well, they'll, they'll find another vendor. They can keep. Right, right. And they'll do they'll, that they'll as well. They'll right out of your shopping cart and put another vendor in the same product. If you if you want them to, they will do that. The other I don't. Vendor wants fifteen dollars shipping. Right, you have to watch out for that. Yeah, you right. definitely watch out yeah, for all of that. Is that but an extension or an app? It's oh, it's like I don't have. I do all my banking at the bank. I don't do any banking online, or especially nothing on the phone. 
so the only thing that I do buy on the phone is I have one click ordering on my phone from Amazon and theoretically somebody could buy stuff in my name. Amazon already has the credit card information so I don't have to ever transmit that. A side note on Amazon, there's a there's a Amazon website called Smile. Yes. Smile Amazon. It'll and donate. I really recommend you go to that because you can select your favorite charity and they will take a small percentage, but everything you can purchase, they'll send a small percentage to your charity. Except the National Rifle Association. <laughs> I can't find that. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm not leaving. I'm just going to grab his cream really fast. Okay. Right back. Everything else is the same as far as ordering everything. Right. Yeah, I have no problem with anybody, that, you know, doing anything in any part of my life. I get emails every now and then. Guys say, "Oh, I've, I've pwned you. Uh, you know, I've caught you watching porn and all that stuff." I never watch porn, so I know it's, you know, <laughs> he's full of it. <laughs> the closest thing I ever get to porn is. When Forrest sends me, uh, <laughs> and he sends it to you guys too, so you know what I'm talking about. Thank you. And it's not porn; it's just nudies and things like that every now and then. But it, I don't do, I don't do that stuff, you know. I'm, I I live clean. Okay. What? The closest you get to porn is one. Is when four sends me an, a nude picture of some oh, yeah. you know, something. Like that. You know, I mean, and, and I look at them. Sure, who who doesn't like to see a nice, good looking woman, right? I don't care. There's nothing that I I have to hide. So, right, I won't say anything that I have to hide because I don't do anything I have to hide. All right, we move on. All right. Well, <clears throat> well I don't really have, uh, I don't really have much today, but I do have a, just a short story. Remember a year ago, I bought uh, the Lorex cameras and then I built that mound for outside. And I, yeah. okay, okay, so, uh, everything's been working, and then uh, a week or two ago, um, I noticed that my that camera, which is the one that's mainly outside uh, with no weatherproofing, it looked like it was raining outside, or it looked like it had, uh, you know, when it rains, it looks like it's got uh, moisture on the outside of the lens or something like that, and I just kind of blew it off until recently I noticed that it... Uh, it didn't look as good. It looked really like you were looking through a curtain. And uh, I finally jumped up, and it should have been working, but I finally jumped up on the roof and looked at the camera, and there's water inside on the lens. So I said, okay. So finally, yesterday, I took it down, and I couldn't see any screws how to get into it. And I, I would have told... Um, you know, I could have told, um, what's his name, um, Stan to put it up on the screen, but we'll not do that today because you've got this other thing going. But anyway, the front of the camera, I mean, I've been working on these cameras for 15 years and doing cameras for longer than that. Uh, there was just no screws anywhere, so I called up Lorex and I'm sitting on hold on the phone and I'm sitting there with a jewel screwdriver, and it was a long wait, and I just started poking at the front of the phone where I thought this was the camera. A, 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 the camera. Right. And all of a sudden, I realized they had this paper trim around the perimeter of the phone, of the camera, of the camera. So um, I started poking harder, and it lifted. I thought it was painted on, so I never, you know, dreamed about it. So anyway, so to make a long story short, I lifted the four corners and I got a screwdriver in there and opened, just like every other camera, you know, four Phillips and the front pops off. I don't know how water got in there. Well, it was condensation, but it was, you know, and the, the camera points down. So it could be condensation. Yeah. I easily, don't know, but over a year so period. I took it apart and um, 
you know, the front comes right off and there's one plug and that releases the wire. Uh, and then I just uh, dried everything up with cotton balls, some Q-tips, and some compressed air to get any lint out of there. And there's had a rubber O-ring, uh, like a piece of foam around the lens that goes into the front glass. I think it's to prevent any glare from coming back. But anyway, that was soaked. So what I ended up doing, the sun came out at the end of the day, I put everything outside for about an hour and got it dried out really good. And then I put it together last night. I put it up there this morning and I'm back in business. So if you ever get that problem. Call you. Well, not, well, <laughs> well he's got a Lorex system also. So, but that's, you know, I've had cameras outside for years. I've never had that much condensation. I mean, it was wet. It was wet inside. The camera tips down, right? Yeah. So the condensation collects in the bottom. Right. Also, it's on the roof, which right. means so it's on the sun. So it's expanding and contracting an awful lot. Maybe you might want to put a very tiny hole in the bottom for that condensation to drain out. You know what's got a rubber gasket? When the front goes on, it's yeah. got a yeah, but you're still going to get that one. Uh, or some, or some desiccant. Well, yeah, well, let well, me tell you something. Oh, my other analog camera that I had up there uh, for years, I was having a water problem, and I did drill holes in the bottom. Yeah. Th th this is a much more sophisticated camera, and I'm not sure. You know something? If I have the problem a second time in a uh -huh. year, yeah, I'll consider that suggestion. Yeah. But right now, I'm going to just go the straight, you know, I'm going to go straight and just leave it the way it is. Yeah. Of course, uh, why don't you contact the company and ask them what they can get? Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Or you were on hold. Yeah. Do you, uh, is it, it's, so it sounds like the camera is completely in the element. It is. Okay. So the difference with my cameras is they're all underneath. Right. But you don't have that option. Two You're of right. my cameras are underneath. This one is just right outside. But you know, it points down, it's got the rubber gasket. And it's got also a cover that goes right over the front of it. Yeah, but it's not very big. No, but it does cover the seam. Right. It covers the seam. Right. And what's, so, uh, what's one of the problems that you have, excuse me, because I did interrupt, and I won't. But one of the problems you have is the sun beats down on that. Right. Thing. It expands. Right. Night comes. It cools. You know, it's moving back and forth. There's a lot of humidity in the air. I'm sure that there is condensation. Of no matter, you know, what you say. And the ones that are I under mean, eaves don't get the sun on. I said to myself, put them bird on in summer. Hotter. But, but we did have some driving rains the last sure, month. Sure. Right. So, some very, uh, who knows? It's, it's just a guess. Yeah. So I'm in the process of completely replacing my right. Lorex cameras. I'm going to go to uh, something called Unify. What? Uh, Unify. And uh, Unify Protect uh, cameras. And uh, they have a they have a rating for water that is supposed to be, I don't know what the rating is. Uh, they're not submersible, but they're supposed to be really tight as far as water goes. I don't know what the Lorex cameras are for, for rating. Look at the IP rating, like a yeah, 65. Yeah. yeah. So, and the reason I'm going to, one of the reasons I'm going to that Lorex is for that uh, uh, Unify is that the software is just way better. Really? The Lorex camera. I, I like the camera. They're very rock solid, reliable. See, coming from the analog world to Lorex, for me, it was like, wow, this is great. I mean, I can, I, well, each camera is. Ranges in price from eighty bucks up to about okay. five hundred. Okay. So, uh, but the cool thing is, I can go on my phone, find a find a, a, an alert where there was motion, and I can highlight it and I can adjust where I want it to, to download, and I get download. Download right into the phone, into my into my photo album on my phone. Right. It's fantastic, <clears throat> and you can do the same on a web for your web browser and your computer. It's what's uh, it called again? It's called Unify Protect. Unify. Yeah. So Is that a Costco a, item by any chance? No. No, okay. I've already purchased the DDR, and uh, I bought one camera just to see if I like it. And I really do. I, I replaced the camera on the front of our house. Uh, 
Um, and, uh, and I'm going to go fully replacing all the cameras. I mean, Lorex is a, you know, is a quality system. It is. I'm not, I'm not downplaying it. The only thing, really, the thing that drove me away from Lorex is the, is the software. The software is not the right thing. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's because I have a Mac and Apple products. It's so, not as, it's not as, uh, as, as was it a was it a communication problem or something that you wanted it to do that it couldn't do? It's just just using it is uh, it is it's not what I would consider to be user friendly. Try downloading a piece. Try downloading a clip of, of something that comes from your camera your DVR. Try downloading a clip of right. You know exactly what you want. It's a, it's a chore. You mean a playback? A playback. Download that. Okay. Well, I will tell you that doing a playback on my uh, I got got a, a Windows 7 laptop, um, and that's what I travel with. And um, I have done playback, but even it locks up a lot, and it's really difficult. Now, doing it on the phone is I haven't done it on the phone in a long time doing a playback, but I remember I was struggling to, to make it. Um, There'll be more, I'll, be, I'll talk more about the, the, uh, the but, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it. you know, when I do a playback, uh, right off the machine into the TV, you know, it works great. But when I have to interface with the internet, um, the software doesn't, it doesn't stream smoothly. So sometimes it stops. You, know, you can watch the clock. The clock will stop. Yeah, so you're proving my point. Okay. So, that, okay. That's, that's well, well, reason, okay. I, I want, that's, that's what, the reason I don't like it. Got gotcha. you. So, okay. Uh, but another thing I like about these you know, my pet cameras is, they're, in essence, there's a little computer in there. Cause it, I think it's Linux that runs those cameras. And I can, in the camera settings, I can go in and I can copy the, um, R, I can turn on RT, I think it's called RTSP, <laughs> and I can copy the RTSP link, and I can use that and look okay. directly at the camera with like VLC, or with, um, or I, I, I've already looked on my, on my Roku, I can download a camera application and plug in those RTSP okay. uh, links to reach the cameras, so I can go to an app on my Roku and see all my cameras on my TV. So it's extremely flexible. So I'll talk more about it as the as the year progresses and I have more experience with it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Can we move on? Mike, would you please take the floor and describe what it is that you've got and what you're doing? There are some of us, some of the latecomers may not realize that what we're doing is using Zoom to stream. Zoom. Experimentally, we did it kind of for the moment. Uh, right now, Dick Vogel is listening. And he's, I, I, and Yui. Well, I'm on, but I talked to uh, Craig, the, the British guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, Norm Griffin. I let them know that we were going to be streaming this afternoon, but we didn't. You know, we didn't. Really prep it. Everybody knows, right? Um, a week ago, <clears throat> we were holding a meeting in my other club that I'm very active in, Corvette Club, and one of our members <clears throat> joined us here in Florida as a snowbird from Ohio and decided, okay, I'm going to move down there. So naturally it was new blood. And they said, would you mind running a, a rally for us? And he said, sure, I'll be glad to, <clears throat> but I'm going back to Ohio and I won't be down till October. So we planned a day in October to run the rally, but we need coordination meetings. So I said, well, let's have a coordination meeting and I'll <coughs> Skype it. So I, in fact, brought my Chromebook and I used an HDMI cable and put it on in the conference room. I have a TV and I hooked it up and we used the camera that was in this Chromebook and we used the microphone that was in this Chromebook. And we could hear him fine on the TV, but we just could not, couldn't see, you know, he could not see us because this is such a small lens on the Chromebook. And, um, he had real trouble hearing us. And you take this group, probably twice the size and everybody's talking at once. And so we needed a microphone that would do the work. So that started my research. And I, it'd take 
half hour just to tell you all the stuff I went through. But eventually, I wound up with this cardioid microphone. It's USB, and uh, it seems to have a very good pattern. You can focus it unidirectional. You can focus it omnidirectional. Huey had said in our tests earlier that omnidirectional sounds muddled because the noise just has a tendency to all come in at once and that when it's unidirectional, um, you can make out what people are saying as long as there aren't too many people talking at the same time. So we just literally today checked out, this is about a $40 microphone from Amazon that I stumbled on. I returned the one that I had gotten, which is like the old wireless mics that we used to have that was just a plug in into the phono plug because the Chromebook and my Windows notebook had a lot of trouble recognizing it. And this, this seems to work pretty well. Is that wireless as well? This is a, a wireless mic in terms of, um, well, what is it? No, it really isn't. I'll be honest with you. No, it isn't wireless because <coughs> I'm using USB. Right. Not right. just for power, but I'm, I'm feeding it in. This is a mount. This is a mount. Okay. The, the base of the mount, let's see if we can bring this up here. So he's asking me about this particular mount that's here. The base of the mount has a very strong clip. So it's designed to actually replace the uh, generic little microphone that's a tiny little hole sitting in the top of your, your notebook. And the uh, audio response is excellent. And they even have recommendations for music recording and acoustic guitar and, you know, all of that, which I could care less about. No, this is USB. No, I mean the other part. How's, it, how's your, your mount connected to the... It's just a um, ball and socket. Oh, okay. That's your watch. Like, it's going from the small microphone to the full screen. Is that something you're doing? That is Zoom. And the way that Zoom seems to work in a conference is the person who's talking at the time gets the focus. And the idea, of course, is, is like when Huey's presenting, he sets himself up as a presenter, and then he gets a full screen. And you don't normally see all the others. So we're actually in a conference mode now on Zoom. We need to be, we'll work, you know, Rather than Huey jumping in at this point, we'll we'll work it out between us and see if we can't get it just to be in a presenter mode, or we'll try some other software, sure. and we'll we'll see um, what we can do. So the next thing was video, and again, the notebook has a video, and it's fine if you're just sitting in front of it. But what you really want is clear enough video and the ability to mount it on a tripod, which uh, black duct tape seems to work very nicely. And um, I, you know, I tried, I actually, bec again, with the Corvette Club, um, I went ahead and bought a sport camera. It's good to 60 feet underwater in the case that they give you. It is uh, wireless. Um, I'm finding out it doesn't stream, though. It records. It doesn't stream. My idea was, well, I'm going to use that in the car to record some of the, the rally that we do and other interesting places that I drive the Corvette. Um, and I thought I would mount it on this tripod and then I could stream and plug it in, but there's no way I can, I can get a mini HDMI into it or a micro HDMI into it, but all it does is download what's stored on the SD card. It doesn't stream it. So as I was trying to think, well, what can I use? And Huey and I were both talking. I said, well, Huey, what are you using? He says, I'm just using my webcam. And of course, duh, of mm -hmm. course. I'm sitting right here looking at this webcam mounted on my <coughs> computer so I can use Skype at home, talk to the grandkids. So um, this, this is a Microsoft high definition. It's a very nice camera, but I'm even seeing it now. Microsoft built into the hardware itself auto focus. So every time you rotate this around, you may see it if I, if I turn this on over there, it's, it, it will focus in, focus out. 
come back in, come back out. So Huey has a Logitech. Yeah, there we go. So Huey has a Logitech and I may just look into going ahead and getting getting something similar to what he has that that you can manually control it manually. So I haven't been able to do it. So the anyway, the combination and, and all this is being done on a Chromebook using the Zoom plugin. So I didn't have to use a Windows notebook, which I could, I was prepared to do, but I just like the low overhead of a Chromebook. How much memory you got in your Chromebook? Uh, 16 gigs, I think. And storage, I think, is also 16 gigs. And I put a, a, a 16 gig SD card in the side, and I'm nowhere near taxing it. Now, one of the other things we did discuss and also come to a conclusion on is that sport camera that I've got. When they say wireless, what they're saying is it's wireless to an Android phone or an iOS phone. You download the app, you put it on your phone, and the camera will in fact transfer its data and maybe stream, we don't know yet, <clears throat> to that app. Well, the new Chromebooks take Android apps. So theoretically, I could bring, with a, if I had a different Chromebook, I could bring that up, put that app on there, have my wireless camera broadcasting to the app, and use that instead of this. I don't know. It may be a better lens on it. I have no idea. So other things to investigate. And probably, um, we'll have to see, Huey's recording this, so we'll have to see how good the audio is, especially when it's further away. I could put this microphone on a selfie stick and just sort of go around the room with it, which would, you know, work better. I noticed that uh, the ca whichever camera, I don't know which one. It's this one. But it's very jerky and, and lags. Yes, well, and, and that's because Stan is participating. I'm not seeing that on my screen. Okay. But Stan is participating. We're using Denny's Wi-Fi, which the throughput mm -hmm. is terrible. And, and so you're actually seeing up here on the screen. Now the key again is since Huey's is recording down in Bradenton, what is transferring from Denny's down there and then on his system, what he's able to record. So when we play it back, you know, I'll look to see, okay, how is somebody <clears throat> getting it at the other end? Because this is so bad, you know, here at Denny's. I, I can <clears throat> switch my Wi-Fi to Spectrum and may, I may be, Ending that at the end of the first month because they changed the rules after the installation. They named one price and then started charging another. I said, "Well, we'll either we'll either go with the price you quoted me on the phone, which you have a recording of, or you can come get it and take it right after." I got Spectrum when I when I dropped cable. I got Spectrum to lower my cost to $64 for 100 megabits. Well, I have 500 megabits. That's excellent. And it doesn't get quite that, but it gets 480, 482 typically. The upload is terrible. Yeah. For that kind of speed, I would expect, you know, 50 megabit upload. <coughs> what? 20. 20. What 20 if we, to 22 sometimes. What if we, instead of going through Denny's, what if we would just went through somebody's uh, cell phone service? Works You're going to use their data. Well, I understand, but if somebody's got unlimited, got somebody's got un data. unlimited, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. Would it make? But it would make a difference. Um, I do have. Well, we do. A number of us have Spectrum, and Spectrum does have huh? right here in this area does have a, a hotspot, so we could test that and see if it's any better than Denny's. <clears throat> Let me just very quickly do my show and tell, since I've got all this stuff. What what in part started. What I wanted to do is I said I wanted to record stuff on in the Corvette. So I have a little key fob with a push button on it. And my idea was take my cell phone, put in a cell phone mount with a suction cup, stick it up in the window of my Corvette, get it the right angle, whatever. There we are, down there, no, over here, wherever I am. Um, wherever. Lagging, yeah, so okay, so there it is. Okay. And then put it on movie, press the record button, and start driving. 
Okay, but sometimes you want to stop it, sometimes you want to start it, you want to take your eyes off the road, whatever. So Amazon, again, sells for 15 or 16 or whatever bucks, just this little Bluetooth, I think it's Bluetooth, yeah, it must be Bluetooth, um, fob. Just got a little cell, got a star stop button. You put your phone in either camera mode or in movie mode, you press the button, it starts. Press the button, it stops. Press the button that starts. Press the button that stops. Well, we just did that. Yeah, it did. And so, you say, yeah, you start recording. Start. <laughs> so that, but it was just my little thing. Okay, we're ready for Ted. I know I got a question. Oh, question from Sean. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the new Corvette? Uh, that's. That is technology on wheels. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, some, of you, some of you will remember when I brought my Kia here, which I do happen to have here, I talked a little bit about the technology that's in that. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing your hunting, you're going to see all the new cars, mm -hmm. the technology. You know, it's, it's more electronics than it is motor and wheels. Right. Um, there, there's, there's more than 200 YouTube videos out there on the new C8. Uh, getting into all the technology that's in that, that thing. So uh, do I want to spend for an entry level Corvette 60,000 plus tax plus whatever the That's an amazing price market. though for what you Oh yes. For, Just without wheels. For a mid-engine Corvette? Yeah. Or configured the way I would want to configure it because there's an online configurator. Already? Oh yes. Oh wow. When they announced it. Oh wow. When they announced it. Huh. Just, just Google Corvette online configurator. Okay. And you can go in there and configure it to your heart's content. <laughs> Prices aren't announced yet. They'll be out in August. But um, I'm estimating to get it the way I would want to configure it. I'm looking at somewhere between 110 and 120,000. And I don't, you know, Corvette I've got is going to stay with me. It's going to last longer than I am. It's going to go on to my son when the time comes. Those are the, those are the for 60 grand, do you get the technology for the smaller engine? Or no, that's well, for the 110, it does include an upgrade in the horsepower. They have what they call a Z51 package. I hope so. <laughs> um, but, and that gets you zero to 60 in three seconds, yeah. I think three seconds. No, but I'm talking about so, the tech part of it. Tech's the same. Okay. Text the same dual clutch transmission, electronic uh, limited slip differential. No, no, um, manual. Hmm? no manual. <laughs> no shop manual. No, no oh, manual. no manual shifting. No, it's all they they proved that the automatic dual clutch, where they you use this on the one on, on, is faster yeah, than that's not what it's all about. Well, oh yeah, sure. It's about driving. Yeah. yeah. Well, but how so many people? How, how many people? How many people love that three on the tree? You know, remember how that used to be too? No, so I don't. But yes. It's an extra precaution for getting your car stolen. We had a guy the other day that yeah. 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 wanted to steal the car because he didn't he know did how to drive a stick set. I love that. that was fun. Yeah. One piece of trivia. What is the first American made sports car? First American? Yes. Well, it was not the Corvette. No. No. The, uh, uh, Frazier? Nash Healy. Frazier Nash, Nash, Nash Healy. Healy. Yeah. Nash Healy. My father's law partner back in Albany, New York, had one of those. They're on those. They were on the pickers the other day. They bought. They finally been looking at them, and they finally bought one. It was a roaster. What, 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 what year? I think it's fifty-two. That they bought. Oh, no, there were sports cars in the twenties. Not what you call a sports car. But not like today's sports yeah. car. Okay. Ted's turn. Terrific. Thank you. Very interesting. How do you get my mouse? Gary, I have a question you, uh, for Sean. Uh, we'll, we'll go over to Gary Esslinger. Okay, uh, you want to get eating. You want to get onto the projector or? Uh, oh, all right. No, yeah, no I'm not no, on no, that. No, no projector. Okay. Okay. Uh, down on the floor, you'll see a, a thing that's blinking. And Sean had recommended those at one of the meetings. And I had just had a theft at one of my houses where someone tried to they stole the chlorinator off the water system, and then they they tried stealing the whole water system, the, the chlorinating, the salt, the holding tanks, the resin tanks. 
on a $3,500 system and they actually cut the pipes in eight places. And because they were using a rusty limb saw, when they tried to cut through the one inch pipes, the saw would bind. And then they went to another place and tried to cut that and it would bind. So I had to spend a whole day putting Choosing. couplings in there. But, but I started thinking, you know, I need to be a little more safe around here. Well, that is a fake TV light. So um, the house that this happened at is vacant. So in order to show some activity, I put that actually in the living room kitchen area and face it up to the ceiling. And it oh, just it makes all the windows glow and it looks, it does look like a TV. And that's an Amazon product. Mm -hmm. They're, they're 1450 or something like that. And very, very, very low um, power consumption. I did take it apart to see if I could uh, reverse engineer it and they actually have sandblasted the computer chips on it so you can't tell <laughs> what, what, what the computer chip is. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, that was one thing. And um, I did buy, um, during the, the special Amazon days, I, I did buy an Echo Plus and I was pretty amazed at the sound of the Echo Plus compared to the Echo. And I mean, it was just, I plugged it in and it, I didn't have to do any configuration. I didn't have to go to Wi-Fi and find it on the Wi-Fi. And I didn't have to mess around. I just plugged it in and it just started working. And I, so I, I haven't explored ZB, ZB, um, you know, it's got a hub for ZB Zigbee. device, Zigbee, Zigbee devices. Zigbee's, yeah. And uh, I'll explore that later. Uh, and also with that, Echo Plus came the Amazon plug, which is a $15 item. And that thing was pretty much plug and play too. You just plug it in and it just showed up on the Amazon app and easy to configure time on, time off. Um, you, say, you say you put that so it shows through a window or what now? Yeah, I, I actually bought two. I have one uh, in the machine shop where I actually have it reflecting on okay. the bottom side of the mini blinds. Okay. So the mini blinds are sort of doing that. And then the okay. other building, the rental house, which is that empty, I ha I just put it on the floor and face it up and it just shines on the ceiling. What was it called? Fake TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, TV yeah that's the fake TV down TV there. Simulator. So that's what it does. It, okay. it, it does the full light spectrum and, and it flicker. And I walked down the street and I looked at and analyzed and I says, it, really does look at like a TV. There's no doubt about it, you know. Uh, instead of running a real TV, you know, that, that works really good. Uh, a, a whole lot less power and a whole lot less hours on a real TV. Uh, you know, so, theoretically, you could, uh, you could get one of those battery, ba battery packs mm -hmm. and plug that into the battery pack and plug the battery pack in the wall so you would have you would always have the TV. It would never go off. It would never go off. Yeah. Well, unless the bat, unless the power went out for a really long time. Well, I, I'm sure the drain on that is is you Pretty know low. Yeah. very low operated? wattage, huh? Is that battery operated? No. No, it's not. That's but it's a USB. But it's a USB. Could be. It's a USB right. cord that you plug into a USB mm -hmm. plug in the wall, like you charge. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So he could plug it into a, one of those battery things for charging your cell phone. Right. Yeah. He could plug it into that. Mm -hmm. And then plug the charger into the wall. I would have yeah, you could. Yeah. And as bad as TV is, you can charge that thing. Yeah. That is way better than CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Something to go to sleep by. I do. I, I actually bought a Loric system and I, I actually so haven't done it yet. Well, um, the cop told me, he says, when you want to put your camera system in, he says, you really, he says, we don't want to see pictures of people wearing hoodies and in the dark and all that. We want to see a license plate. That's what we want. We don't care about what they look like or anything else. We want the license plate. So you need to position from the car they stole. You need to position the camera so that it gets their right. license plate off the street when they pull up. So 
we've got to rethink about how that's going to happen. So um, anyway, I won't involve the police. Huh? I won't involve the police. Somebody tries to get in Yeah, they actually left. They actually left the saw in the morning. My neighbor's dog has a big dog started like barking like crazy. So he let the dog out and he thought maybe he just had to pee, you know, which would mean going out and coming back in. But he said the dog was out there for like 20 minutes barking. So he says it probably saved you a $3,500 water system. So thank you for having that dog. But uh, anyway, uh, totally unrelated to anything that we talk about. I just happened to watch a YouTube and I thought I had some interesting facts and that was they were talking about grade three ball bearings. Mm -hmm. And he said that on a one inch ball bearing, the, the sphericalness, you know, the per, to be a perfect sphere, right. it is within, a grade three is within three millionths of an inch accurate, which is equivalent to 750 hydrogen atoms. That's how accurate. And he says to, to get you to comprehend that, he says, get that one inch ball and enlarge it to the size of the earth. The highest mountain and the lowest valley would only be 125 feet. Wow. Okay, so mm. anyway. So another thing I want to talk about is our, our, our user group for the Mac doesn't have a website. The website went down. It is. You got a hosting company? Whatever Jonathan did is hosting. Oh. You can go to it. Well, no, I'm not, we're, not, we're not done with the need for something. But at least for the moment, it is. So if we go to flmug.com, it will pull up. There is something there. Well, that's excellent. I think we lost a little something in the translation, but the main page is there. Well, that's good because. I, Amazon. Because I, I was thinking, I was kind of brainstorming and, think, and passed the idea to Sean is, why don't we use one of the new Raspberry Pis? Your, your information is still, still useful. In okay, so we could, we could host the website on a Raspberry Pi. The only question I would have is, I know that with Spectrum and Bright House, they want you to have your internet service for doing internet and streaming but they really don't want you hosting a website on your internet service. But I was thinking, wouldn't a VPN service take care of that where they don't know that you're hosting a website? I don't know, I just thought, thought I'd throw it out. Well, they don't want you hosting websites using Bright House or Spectrum. Right, but I, that's what I'm saying. If you have a website, you probably have high traffic. No, not with FL Mug. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we, there might be like five people a month, you know, and we have three. We have about three pages, you know. So it would be the most minimal website ever, and minimal bandwidth. But I know that Spectrum and Bright House have a way of detecting if you're hosting a web page, right? Maybe, maybe yeah, I, 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 I use Green Geeks, and I, what is that? of course. It's a, a hosting company. Okay. And they have some very, very cheap rates for minimal things like that. I mean, like thirty, forty dollars a year. Well, that wouldn't be bad. So I mean, that's certainly affordable. So you know, I, I think I spend a hundred and sixty dollars a year, and I have four websites with probably eight sub webs on some of them, and. Okay. There's greengeeks.com. Yeah. Oh, okay. And 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 I have I don't know, there's I get thousands of hits a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, thousands, like sometimes fifteen, twenty thousand hits right. in a day. And and um, like four websites run off the thing. And it's like hundred and sixty nine dollars a year for all of it. That's but what I do is I, I, I have one site and then I house the other sites inside of it. But you still only have to put, you know, the accessweb.com or datastripe.com or arvinmeyer.com. 
and it would take you. And then the URL on their page would be right. just that only. It shows the right thing. And, okay. and I mean, you can do anything. In fact, I could probably stick one of yours on mine. There you go. Well, because uh, I, I, I checked out one that was called like free hosting. Yeah. What it is, though, is that every time you need a service or you need to have tech support is five bucks. Ah, so I, I can see right. that that's going to be a, a rabbit hole, you know. So it's excellent. And that tech support's free. And I mean, it's a, I, I had GoDaddy and they started raising the prices and got ridiculous. And I was paying up over $400 a year. And I said, no, that's enough. No. So to answer his question. Uh, I do host a, a website at home. Okay. And I have Bright House, and they don't block it yet. Are you using VPN? I, no, no. Oh, so they don't I say am. anything. So they're they're not blocking it. And if you wanted me to do the hosting, I would be willing to do that. So. And he's probably even on, on a Raspberry Pi three could do it. Files. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, you had a comment? No. What you doing? Okay. Okay. Well, the, the, I was just wondering about that. So thank you. Bill. Yeah. Okay. And ra speaking of Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi four is out. Yeah, four B. Yeah. So and it's, and it's uh, takes it got to have a three amp power supply for it, <laughs> and it uses thirty percent more power. Two HDMI. Huh? Two mic mini or micro HDMI. Yeah. Mics yeah. Ports. Two monitors if you want. It's got uh, USB three on two ports. One to four gigs of RAM. Uh, yeah, it's got uh, one gigabyte uh, Ethernet. Yeah, gigabit, gigabit Ethernet. Yeah, you can have uh, Power one over Ethernet? for thirty-five dollars. Wow. You, you can get one gig of RAM, but only twenty dollars more. You can get four gigabytes. Okay. So duh. That's very good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Four gigs is a lot. Four of gigs power. for twenty bucks more. Yeah. Why not? You know and. So I, I think just the idea of having our computer club's website hosted on a Raspberry Pi <laughs> just sounds cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Ted. Yeah, Ted, I guess. I have a question for Sean. Uh -huh. How do I turn the sound back on? Oh, <laughs> I didn't turn the sound off. Oh, and what did you do? I closed the web page. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the only other thing I'll mention is that uh, in the paper today there was an article about Equifax being compromised. So that happened a year ago. Yeah, yeah. this is again. Again. Well, again. 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 That's about the settlement. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. Seven hundred million dollars. Tells you that. Yeah. That's all. You know, Facebook gets a five billion dollar. Fine, but Equifax only gets one to seventy-five. So documentation and proof to get any money out of it. Yeah. So they don't have any proof. They just have that been on. No, you, you got that documentation that you went to a lawyer or, or you had a definite financial burden. You have receipts, attorneys, every, whatever. So you got to have receipts. No, they are. But with, with with Equifax, that was your phone number, your address, all your history. I mean, there was a whole lot more information given out. That shouldn't have been given out. That what compared to what Facebook was giving out. You may not even know that. Yeah. You know, a lot of the a lot yeah. of the calls and emails and so forth that are phishing and whatever probably come from breaches like that. Yeah. And, uh, speaking of uh, spam, I've had one caller. That's been calling for the last eleven days is called thirty-two times. It's a robot. It's it's crazy. It's a robot. It has a, it has a, a caller ID of um, it's like nothing. I forget what it's called. It start um, with a V. That's what I get. An unknown or something like that. Does he have an accent? No, he never leaves a message because, it, see, what it is, and, and I did some research on this phone number. What it is, it's, it's a Medicare fraud, but, but what it is is they, they contact you and they say, we want to be your Medicare provider. And with that, you'll get a 
three back brace or a knee brace. Yeah. Now, Medicare considers that as a durable good. And there's only a 2% chance that that will ever be reviewed on durable goods because Medicare figures a durable good is a good investment. The, the problem with it is you have to give them your social security number, your Medicare number, yep. all your personal information for them to be your provider. So you now have had identity theft. Also, when you get your back brace, it's some $20 Chinese crap that Medicare will be billed $2,000 for, and you're going to wind up with something that doesn't even do any good for you and doesn't even fit. And the only way you're to reach them is if they call you and if you press two. So you can't even complain to these people. So I thought the FCC was going to stop this stuff. Uh, and, <laughs> well, they said that Medicare, <laughs> this, this, this fraud is like a hundred billion dollar a year yeah. fraud, you know, so it's, you know, it's big. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just in this week, I've gotten three uh, emails from banks yeah. and well, they all say, We've having trouble with your account. You need to update it and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. and the only trouble is I don't have an account with any of those. Banks. Of course. <laughs> so obviously I don't reply to them. If you freeze your account, a lot of that goes away. Freeze your credit reports. Yeah. They're all frozen. And they well, then, go then away. there's nobody that can contact you with anything. There's another one I'm getting, J.M. Brockton, I think it is. Anybody got that one? No, nobody called me. Well, many months ago, I answered the first one because I didn't know who it was. And really, very soon discovered it was a crank call. And uh, the guy did give a name. And then about every week, I got a call from the same number Ball. The second time I answered it was somebody else, but the same name showed on my display on the phone. And since that time, I get the same name, and I don't even answer the damn thing. Yeah, it's unknown. So, it's a, oh, yeah. The compressed, moment. compressed air, air horn. Yeah. Like you take out on a, on a boat. It it's works. Nice. If it's, I mean, if it's, if it's an automated yeah. call, it doesn't do any good. But if there's somebody behind that phone and you oh, just go. Oh, it kills it. Yeah. You talk real low first so they turn it up and so they can hear you. And then you. Mm -hmm. and you kill it. Kill it. You kill it. Well, I can never get anybody You're automatically oh, yeah. put on a list of active you should, phone numbers. Yeah. You People that you can be guaranteed you're going to get multiple more calls from other people. Do you have T-Mobile? How can you get an invalid number? That's what I'd like to Google know. Voice. There's it spoofing. says, There's spoofing. I understand that, but how does an invalid number even make a call? What number? Yeah. Well, well, the call <laughs> spoof. No, the number. They spoof it. I get yeah, that all the time. Are, they're not calling from the number that you see. They're see, calling from right. a different number, and the software makes it look like they it's don't a, a want, one number away from yours. They don't want that's their so number to. Thinking. They don't want I their don't number. To, yeah, they don't want their number to be identified. That's why they do that. Yeah. Yeah. The one that called me thirty-four times is called unassigned, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's a whole bunch. Of and those. your cell phone. No, on the home number. I get that in the lean line also a lot. Can I use that? But, but that unassigned is associated to this Medicare fraud. But you, it never rings though, does it? I had I it uh, I you allow it to give through. me one ring, but it's blocked because I want to know there could be a legitimate call, you know. So, but I could make it so my phone is just totally quiet all day long. But I am aware of the spammers because I'll get one ring and then it, then they're you know they're blocked immediately of course, but but this one person I mean thirty four times in ten days it's just it's uh, a robot yeah it's a robot so it cannot press zero to get through to me so right. it just keeps trying and trying sometimes it tries every half an hour so yeah like I say don't take it personal because it's a robot how many do you get in a day how many do you get in a day. Well, it depends, obviously, but some days I get 10 or 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
consider getting one of these things in the area? It works really good. What is it? Century three. It's an app or what? No, no, it's no, you get it on it Amazon. He told about it. Didn't yeah, yeah. It's he told about it. One of the last text things we did was last three or four text things. It's on Amazon, and it's about seventy nine dollars. But I tell you what, Ted, it's the best seventy nine dollars you'll ever spend. I also get zero crank calls. I get zero because again, I have something. I have my UMA service. Oh. And the only calls that go through are on my contact list. So family, friends, whatever will come through. The other ones go to voicemail. Most of the crank calls don't even wait to go to voicemail as soon as they get. Yeah, so so I don't, my, my phone's quiet. <laughs> okay, just write down Sentry, S-E-N-T-R-Y, three. Because I'm not hooked up up there, we can't get on Amazon right now. So it's seventy seventy nine dollars. But I tell you what, it just is that three or T A. The number three, Century three. It's a it's a it's a spam blocker, telemarketing blocker. <laughs> I get on Amazon, yeah. But I tell you what, I've had many other devices, but and. When you force these callers to press a zero to get through to you, a robot doesn't know how to do that. Right. <clears throat> Huey, uh, they're going to chase us out of here in 20 minutes, and it's going to take me that long to disassemble. So we're going to keep the meeting going. But if you want to go ahead and stop the recording, and then I'll break the connection. I think that works, um, works well. We need to keep. I have three things. Uh, one of them, uh, although what Mike just said may allow me to do this because I would like to plug into your projector, but 